Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. Last video, we continued training Slayer, and I tried bursting for the first time on the account, which was super nice. And then after that, decided to go for the Mage Arena 2 capes because it's just a free, non-RNG based best in slot upgrade for magic, so we have that now. And as I was bursting, I came up with yet another reason to train construction, uh, being able to make house tabs, which we can't do until we can build the Mahogany Eagle Lectern at 67 construction. There's a bunch of other really important upgrades to make in the POH, with the main one being at level 70 construction, the revitalization pool, aka the stamina pool. However, we don't have staminas yet, but I'd at least like to get the level requirement out of the way. We can just get to 64, and then we get the guaranteed boost with the saw and the T, so that we can just boost to 70 then. Although, maybe we'll go to 72 if we have enough supplies and the money to afford it, because being able to build the portal nexus would be really nice. So we are currently at 50 construction, and getting 64 or 66 or whatever ends up being shouldn't be too bad. Uh, we do have long bones in the bank. Uh, <laughs> that's quite a few. Do you have any curve bones? No, okay. Oh boy, here we go. Turn in the long bones to Barlack and then just watch the construction level from level 50. Okay. XP trap all the way to 56. <laughs> 76k con XP from that. Holy crap, dude. Uh, and then we got 17k GP from him as well. I guess that's one of the perks of training Slayer for a while, like in the early game. You just get a huge construction XP drop from that for free, so... Cool, maybe we can get a little bit further than I expected we would. We're gonna go collect from Kingdom now. Uh, i kind of been keeping up with the favor, sort of. The favor, like the percent you have, calculates the amount of resources that you get at the end of each day, but the type of resource is only determined when you actually collect. So right now, I could switch the resource to whatever I want, and that's what we're gonna get. Before we collect, I'm just taking a look at what we have to set on, and apparently I put some mining. So thankfully I checked that. We're gonna set it to teaks because we're gonna be doing mahogany homes. So we're gonna want teak logs for that so we can make them into teak planks. Um, I should probably put some more money in the coffer. We have plenty of GP, so I think I'll put one mil in there. And now let's collect and see everything that we're gonna get. 1,021 teak logs and then a bunch of herbs. Those are probably all gonna end up going over to Spoop because she's the one who's getting herb lore up so that we can get staminas. I'm changing my mind about the Nexus because we need four of these marble blocks and uh, yeah, that's pretty expensive. Uh, I came here though because we need to buy a gold leaf. That's gonna cost 130k. We have to build two bedrooms in the POH as well as two beds, so that way we can hire a servant to make everything easier. Man, when I first got members, I thought construction was the coolest skill when I was a kid. I remember I tried to save up as much money as I could. I think I eventually got to like level 60. I thought it was so cool, like throwing house parties and having your friends over and stuff. And it was just like fun, like building your own house and making all the different upgrades and stuff. Nowadays, it's just about the most efficient house layouts, but there we go, just hiring the demon butler, the highest tier of the butler right away. I already have a maid and a cook, so I'm good. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. The servant can do a lot of things, like they can bank items for you, so like if you're fishing Karambwans, it's nice because you can just teleport to your POH and then use the Karambwan on the butler and then they'll bring it all to the bank. Or if you're like collecting more by your fungus, for example, there's a lot of things you could do that with. What I'm going to be doing right now, though, is using the servant to bring logs to the sawmill and they make them into planks for you. Granted, you do still have to pay, and then no matter what your servant does for you, every eight trips they make for anything, uh, you have to pay uh, a certain fee. For the demon butler, the fee is 10k GP every eight trips, so that is kind of expensive. The servant's money bag was added in 2017, but before that you had to like go through a dialogue each time to give them their payment. But with the money bag, you can just completely skip that dialogue. You'll just get a notification each time they take GP out from the money bag. So we'll just put like 500k GP in there right now and we'll be set for a while. Every time we go to the POH, the servant will just be randomly wandering around. So what we want to do is go to the house options and then call servant. However, we don't have a bell pull right now. So what we have to do is build the dining room and then build the bell pull. And you could just come here and ring it yourself, but you don't have to do that. Just like whenever we spawn in the POH now, you can just immediately do that and the servant will come right to you. The demon butler can move 26 items at once and luckily we have exactly 26 spaces open. So we have, uh, we had some teak logs from before. Looks like we have over 1.6K in total. So we'll just switch that to all, take them out. We're gonna teleport to the POH, get this option ready here. Click house options, call servants. Oh yeah, we have to set this up the first time, but after this time, it should just be a right click option, I believe. And yeah, you do still have to pay the GP, like I said, so 13K per trip. And then when we teleport out of here, because he comes back so fast, when he comes back, 
and you're not there, the planks automatically go to your bank. So we don't have to like go back with an empty inventory or something. Uh, you'll see, we'll take out the teak logs, go back to the POH. And then once we call him, we'll just ask what we want. And just like the default, oh, I guess it's not right click. It's just like the default option right here. Take to the sawmill. Yes. And then, yeah, we'll just keep on repeating this process. Oh, we could also switch the left click default if we configure that. We'll switch the left click to the GE. And yeah, I'll just start doing this now. It looks like the demon butler always spawns in this room, the parlor. Uh, so I want to see if we switch that to a different place. We'll move that like down here or something. And then now when I try calling him, uh, he instantly teleports to me. Okay, so you don't want to have the parlor like right next to the entrance portal. Otherwise, he'll just start slowly walking to you. So if you have the parlor like a little bit further away, then he'll just teleport right to you. By the way, you could also do this on a PvP world because with the Camelot teleport, it teleports you directly next to a bank chest. But I don't trust myself enough to do that. So. We're just using the GE teleport. Well, this is gonna be the last inventory of the teak logs. This took like maybe 20 to 25 minutes or something. And based on the money left in the money bag, looks like we spent about 70K GP just on the servant. And then as for the GP in the inventory, uh, let's see, that was about 800K GP. So this is how you can spend over 800K GP in just over 20 minutes. But look at that, we have 1,685 teak planks, which is definitely gonna be more than enough to guess beyond 64 construction. There's a really good mahogany homes calculator on osrsportal.com um, but if you just google mahogany homes calculator this will be the first thing that comes up uh, and it's just like really really in depth so we're not going to have any of these things i need to be on the regular spell book because otherwise i don't have a way to get around to all these cities so no npc contact for me low efficiency of course we're going to set the goal level to be 64 using adept contracts uh, because that's the teak planks and then this is on average what we're going to need 805 teak planks 35 steel bars, and then it just gives you all these other really cool stats as well. It's like really, really in-depth. We have a bunch of steel bars, probably mostly from gargoyles. Um, and as you saw, we really don't need that many. You don't go through that many doing mahogany homes. Sorry. <laughs> so this will be the inventory setup. And I think we'll just take it as far as we can with construction, just seeing how far these planks get us. And yeah, we'll see what level we get to, starting with 56 construction. Frick, I missed the first level already. There is 57 construction. 58, 59. The goal for magic is level 80, so we can boost to build the Barrows portal in the POH. And ever since I started bursting last video, uh, magic is going to be very, very easy for me. But Spook really needs to get her magic up, and she asked me to give her like as many alkable items as I can. So I'm just going to give her these. I'm pretty much done with needing to alk for magic XP at this point. 60, 61, 62, 63, 350 points. We can now buy the plank sack. And the plank sack is the first thing that anyone should buy from doing mahogany homes. Because what this does is it allows you to store 28 planks in it. So it's pretty much like just having an extra inventory. And and then I guess I could I should start bringing more steel bars with me too. So this way I don't have to stop by the bank as often and I'll be able to get more construction XP per hour. Oh, I was really hoping they would have this. There's a plank sack plugin. So I assume would that tell you um, how many things are in the plank sack if we check it now? Oh, this is so nice. When I was doing this grind on my UIM, I was like searching through the plugin hub and searching, like trying to find if there was a way to have this number here, and there just wasn't at the time. So I guess this is a pretty recent plugin. 64. You can fill up the plank sack while you're in the bank interface if you right click it. It's kind of weird it says use and not fill, but the use option does fill it up with planks. Or you can shift click it as well. 65, 66, 67, 68. And just like that, we are done training construction. We're uh, pretty much out of the planks now. As you can see, it's just whatever's left in the plank sack. I'd rather save those last few planks for building stuff in the POH. Uh, but if we take a look at the XP per hour, uh, looks like I spent over four and a half hours training con today. We got from level 56 to level 68, averaging a bit over 100k XP per hour. Before we go on and start building the stuff in the POH, uh, Spook got the crafting level to boost for glory. So she got level 76 and then she made me these uncooked pies because, you know, if, like if she normally cooks them, she could burn them. But because I can go on the Lunar Spellbook, I can cast the Bake Pie spell and that is guaranteed to not burn them. One last thing I wanted to mention about the plank sack is that it's also going to be pretty nice for sepulchre eventually. I guess if we're going to be baking these pies, we should also make all those Galova Nova fruit tops into the pies as well, the herb lord boosting pies. So we'll just buy some flour and some jugs and yeah, I'll make some, some pie doughs or whatever. We built the Lunar Isle portal in the POH last video, so I'm very glad to have. Don't forget, every time you go to switch your spellbook, no matter how much free inventory space you have, 
Never forget. Okay, so bake pie spell. I don't know if I've ever used this spell before. So we get magic XP and cooking XP, and it's just gonna go through all of them and bake them. I guess it chose to do these first. Maybe it's like alphabetical order. I don't know. And there we go, two freshly cooked mushroom pies and some other weird fruity green pies too. Okay, we got a few key halves and then we got some dragon stones already. I know Spook has at least one dragon stone because I already gave her a crystal key for, uh, I think it was the Faldor diary. So we'll toss all the stuff in the group storage and very soon we'll have a few dragon stone amulets back in here. Another 130k gonna be spent on another gold leaf. Never mind. apparently we have to buy two more gold leaves for the teak shelves too. Uh, the Teak Shelves 2 is what we need to get the plus 3 boost. The lower tier will only give us either plus 1 or plus 2 depending on which one. Which I don't even know if we need a plus 3 boost for anything right now, but eventually at some point we're going to need that extra plus 3 instead of a plus 2, so may as well just buy it now and rip the cash stack. Let's grab the GP out the servant's money bag because we kind of need that right now. Over here we're going to build a study which is going to cost 50k and then build the mahogany eagle lectern and this is the one that we need to make the teleport to house tablet so that when we're on the ancient spellbook I'll be able to get home really easily just using these. And then over here we're going to build one of the most important rooms in the POH for 75k, the superior garden, and then we'll come over to the corner here and we can only build the first tier of the pool because we don't have stamina potions so we won't be able to upgrade it, but the restoration pool is going to restore special attack. So it's pretty useless for now. Um, even with the Dragon Balak special attack, this does not restore lowered stats, so it doesn't help for that. But it's cool just to see like the foundation of the pool just filling out the POH a bit. And then let's build the kitchen for 5k. Let's see, okay, oak larder, come over here to the shelves. The highest tier of the shelves, the teak shelves too. Look at these fancy gold trimmed cups. This is what all the rich people drink out of. It, it's kind of like the equivalent of putting flames on your car. It makes it go faster, except in this case the gold trim gives you a higher construction boost. It's just logical facts. You can't argue with that. Eight steel bars for the fancy range, and then we'll come over here to the sink, and then it's going to be 15 steel bars for the fanciest sink. The kitchen's looking pretty good. Is there no dishwasher space you can build in here? Hmm. That's kind of weird. I was just thinking, because me and Spook actually do have a dishwasher in real life. It's called me. Oh baby, here we go. Let's see them. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh yeah, I gave her a couple more crystal keys to make these dragonstone rings so we could have rings of wealth as well. And then the amulet of glory. Oh, it's beautiful. I'll trade these back to her. Oh, the upgrade, dude. Here's what we had before if you want to compare the stats. The amulet of glory compared to the amulet of power. So plus six for attack versus plus 10 for attack. This has less defense though, but then there's also two more prayer with the Amulet of Glory. And the quest hall is going to cost 25k. And now here's the best part about having glories on the accounts, is uh, having the mounted Amulet of Glory in the POH. So now we can very quickly get to all four of these places, Edgeville, Karamja, Drainer, Alcarid. It's going to help with so many things like doing clues, getting to certain Slayer tasks, researching farming patches, and just getting around easier in general. And it's unlimited teleports. The main idea with the POH in this game, if you didn't know, is that it's kind of like a central hub to be able to like get anywhere. So as long as you have a way to get home, you should be able to do anything you want and go anywhere you want. So with that out of the way, let's start making some house tabs. We have 245 soft clay, and I guess we may as well just make them all into the house tabs. I did move around the room so the lectern's like right next to the entrance portal. And then we just click create house tablet and then we just AFK here and watch this very funny animation. And luckily because we have the dust staff, we only need to use one law rune. We don't have to have like the air or the earth runes in the inventory. As you can see, it's only using up one law rune per tab. Even though it feels like we built so much stuff in the POH, it's like, I feel like it's just one thing per room. So the house still just looks really empty. <laughs> All right, let's see how many house tablets we made. 242. We should be set for a long time for doing bursting with that. I just came over to crabs for a little bit while we were uh, downstairs cooking and drinking for a bit. But I think at this point, we should at least strive for one Slayer level per video. I think that's still pretty realistic at this point. And it's even easier right now because we're already like halfway through the level. So let's get back to doing Slayer. Oh, you can see I had the Ring of Wealth on, so we picked up a few coins as well. If you didn't know, by the way, uh, the Ring of Wealth, even if it's not charged, it picks up any kind of currency, whether it's Numilite, Tackle, or just straight up GP. Hey, D6 hit points. Well, we're so close to 100 combat, one more strength level. Oh, I got neck reels because uh, this is the 200th task, but it's in the Slayer Tower. 
All right, well, I mean, it's still a good task. Yeah, I, I guess because we get the soft clay from those, so we could always use more soft clay at this point. Dragon Med Helm number two, a directly followed by the Rune Boots new collection log slot, and uh, it's the first time we finally have an actual upgrade over Climbing Boots. It's not a huge difference because it's the same strength bonus. They're both plus two. Uh, the only real difference is the defense bonuses. The climbing boots have pretty much no defense, but the rune boots do have a little bit of defense. And so because of that, I would call it an upgrade. So I guess we'll put these into the PVM tab and then move the climbing boots out the way. And that is task number 200 done. We got 450 Slayer points from that. That is so nice. Not as nice as getting Slayer XP though. Also a nice task because we just got the cash stack way up again. Any second, we're about to get a strength level and this strength level puts us at 100 combat so we could do pest control like properly now I mean we could have done it before but with the veteran lander it's a little bit faster uh, and then we could also use Duradel, which I don't think I'm actually going to use Duradel for Slayer until we get the Karamja Gloves. Probably until at least the Hard Diary, so that way we can get the Teleport there. I probably won't be on Lunars too often for NPC contact. Uh, it's another beautiful day to check the Mahogany Trees. This is going to give us 63 farming. Actually, I think we might get one more level if we check this last one here. Yep, that's going to put us at 64 farming. Teo Cactus. One more level till his spory. Here we go, 82 Slayer. This is what it's all about, man. Slayer levels. I just wanted to finish up the Slayer task, so there we go, it is over. We got our Slayer level for the video up to level 82, and in the next video we'll get 83 and then upgrade the boots to the Dragon Boots. It's been at least a few videos, I think, since I've shown the high scores, so just wanted to quickly show this to you. Um, I think this is the best rank we've been so far. Uh, rank 15. We're somehow still on the front page, but yeah, it's cool to see. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my duo teammate Spoot Dogs videos, which you can find a link to in every video description. And with that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that you have a great day, and I will see you again next time.